Hey YouTube, it's Adam from I'm a Music Mogul and welcome to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at one week with Logic Pro 10.4. So let's get straight to it. In this video, we're gonna cover some of the things I like, some of the things I don't like, some of the things that I won't be using, as well as a general overview of what's new. So here we go. The first thing I wanna show you is the smart tempo and how great it actually is. To enable the different modes, you just gotta go up to your tempo over here. And underneath your actual tempo, there are the three different modes, keep, adapt, and auto. Now, in order to use these features to its fullest potential, you're gonna open up smart tempo project settings. And you're gonna to wanna to enable set new recordings to on aligned beats and bars and set imported audio files to on aligned bars and beats. Now, the reason why you want that to be on is because when you drag in a file, Logic will automatically determine its tempo and apply that for you. Or whenever you record on a guitar, vocals, whatever it may be, Logic will automatically map out that tempo as well. Now, if these are set to off, Logic will just act as it always has. So if you drag in a sample, it's not gonna change the tempo. So let's go ahead and just change set new recordings to on aligned bars and beats. Close that. We're gonna change our tempo to adapt mode. And I'm gonna go ahead and record in a quick beatbox. Just create a new software instrument track. All right, so there is that quick beatbox right over there. I'm gonna go don't show, take off record arm, and uh, here's the four bar pattern. So right here you can see the different tempos that I recorded in, or at least how Logic determined it to be, and uh, it already mapped that out for me. So I could go ahead and just take that loop right away and just quickly sort of loop that and it'll loop that uh, tempos as well. But if we want to just set a normal tempo for the entire track as you probably would want to, uh, make sure your global settings is open over here. Go tempo, tempo sets, new set. We can just leave that untitled for now. Change that to keep. And then we can go ahead and lower the tempo. So let's lower it to 105. <laughs> And that will follow with it. If I go ahead and do that faster. So as you can see, it's a quick way to record something in, get it tempo mapped, and you're just ready to go off to the races. So that is how Smart Tempo works in a nutshell. Next, let's go ahead and explore some of the new features that 10.4 has to offer. All right, so let's go ahead and just, uh, let's mute up this beatbox over here. And uh, the first thing that we're gonna bring in is Logic Studio Horns. Now, I was excited for these two instruments, horns and strings, but to be honest with you, they didn't really reach what I wanted it to reach, and um, the sound is also not, I don't know, not amazing in my opinion, but um, here's how it sounds. You can make that opinion for yourself. That's of course is a trumpet. Now there are some things that you can adjust with it. Uh, if you want to play more of a chord style trumpet, you can turn off monophonic. So as you can see here, as we sustain the note, some of that vibrato was coming in. So if I turn down vibrato, it's just gonna be straight. If I turn up the vibrato, you're gonna have that vibrato action happening. You can also pull up humanize. And you could adjust its attack and release. Now it's, again, it's not the greatest sounds. I don't know if they re-recorded it or just kind of remapped what they had before. Uh, if we go to, let's say an R&B section here.
Again, it's not the best of sounds, but that's what you get with studio horns. Next, let's go ahead and open up studio strings. So once again, same thing here. I'm not sure if Logic or the team at Apple just took whatever sampled strings they had from the EXS24 instruments and kind of plopped it into this new plugin. So here you got the same things as well. You got the monophonic. This you can just use your controller to kind of adjust how you're playing it to give it more emotion to it. But uh, right now I don't have a MIDI controller connected so I can't really show you. Uh, right now I'm just using the actual keyboard on my laptop. Over here, some of the settings you got is your cutoff filter, resonance, volume, and attack and release, fairly simple. But if we go through and just take a listen how, let's say the singer songwriter sounds like. not bad I think these are more usable than the actual horns but um, it's not bad you can also switch up and if you want to do like disco strings there's a little different fine-tuning between the sounds that they recorded so I actually find logic cellos are pretty good and I'll probably use logic cellos in my songs but uh, that's neither here or there. So that's session strings and horns. Next one I'm gonna show you is the new EQ plugins. Uh, so we got Vintage Tube EQ, and this is pretty much modeled after the Pultic EQ. Uh, the thing that I like about these analog uh, EQs, which I'll get to in a moment, is here is your console EQ. So this is more like your Neve EQ, modeled after the Neve, and uh, your Vintage EQ. Uh, sorry, let me see here. Here's your graphic EQ, which I meant to say, and that is modeled after the API graphic EQs. Uh, so what's really cool about like analog EQs is that when you have a regular EQ or equalizer, there's an unlimited possibilities of what you can do within it, right? So it could drive you crazy at times and be like, okay, let me adjust that, let me adjust that, let me adjust that, and it can drive you crazy. With these vintage analog sort of emulation EQs, not only does it add some of that character that we've grown to love from a Neve EQ, from a Poltec EQ, but it also just sort of strips everything back down and it kind of forces you to make a decision, especially with this API one right here. So if you want to boost in the 2K range, you just do that and that's it. You can only boost that 1K, 2K, 4K. There's none, nothing in between and you're not going to drive yourself crazy trying to fine tune it. All you have to do is just pull it up and you're good to go and you walk away. So that's what I kind of like about the ease of use of these EQs. Now, I could do another separate video on more in depth on when and why to use these, but just know that this is modeled after popular vintage analog EQs that a lot of actually third-party plugins have implemented into their plugins like the um, like Waves has a set of all these, uh, UAD has a set of all these. A lot of, of these manufacturer plugins kind of modeled their vintage collection after these um, popular EQs. All right, so the, for next thing, uh, let's show you, actually let's create a new software instrument track. That is audio track. Let's create a new software instrument track. And uh, here is Logic's vintage Mellotron. Now they had it before, but they never actually had a individual plugin for it that you could just pull up from the audio unit side of things. So here's how it sounds. If you watched my God's Plan by Drake remake last week, you'll see that we use this to create that main string section. The cool thing about this, again, because it's like an modeled after like an analog sort of uh, 
synthesizer, you can only do a finite amount of things, which I like. I like to strip down things that kind of forces you just to make a decision and move on. So for sound A, you can just choose out of these groups of things. And then you can blend it in with sound B. You could transpose each sound up one octave or down one octave. Adjust the tape speed. Turn up the tone. Darker, brighter, and of course your basic volume knob. So that is Vintage Mellotron in a nutshell. All right, so next let's get to those new effects plugins that Logic has bundled into 10.4. But let's just go ahead and open up a sound here. I just want to get something that we can just play off of. Let's get something good. So I note whatever that loop is, it sounds amazing. I think it turned into a beat. So I hearted that. I'm going to turn that into a beat soon. Caution synth. If you have Logic Pro 10.4, take a look at that one. Just trying to find something that's not annoying that we can listen to over and over. Let's just use that one. Probably not the greatest one because I wanted something that was dry and not has a lot of effects on it. But let's just go with that. All right, so here is your effects plugins right here. So if we go to audio effects on the track, we'll go under multi effects and let's put on fat effects. Now, it looks daunting when you first look at it, but it's actually fairly simple. Think of this fat effects plugin as like a whole boatload of effects that you can apply to your sound, and they're all divvied up by these small squares. So for your first one is your band pass. So you kind of choose what you want. All right, so your basic band pass. Next, you have like this XY modulator over here, and uh, it can you can set it to do a couple different things. So let's turn on our filter over here, and for our X, okay, let's just do the filter cutoff so we could hear it. We'll put it all the way to 100%, and let's set this down over here. And then of course you can set your Y axis to do something as well. So um, let's do filter drive so we can actually hear it here. Uh, let's pull this up to 100% and here we go. So you can adjust that. So it's kind of like adding an EQ and a drive and automating it all at the same time which makes it a little bit easier. Uh, again, you can do multiple two things on each access. So X, you're gonna set two things and Y, you can set two things. Um, and you could set any one of these parameters to this. So if it's grayed out, it means it's not enabled. Um, and if I turn it on, so let's say distortion, now you'll see the distortion grid bit crusher over here and we can adjust that. All right, I think you get the point with that. Next is distortion. Let's go ahead and turn that off. And distortion is pretty straightforward. It just distorts your sound. You can select what type of distortion you want. Uh, I guess it's modeled after their guitar uh, emulators for distortion because here's Scream. Uh, you could change your grip. You can add dirt. All 
All right, next you got your mod effects over here. It's sort of like a chorus. Nothing too crazy. Your bass enhancer. Now actually for this bass enhancer, how I would use this and how I have been using it for the past week, uh, I'm just gonna pull up a drum kit here. Sorry guys, we're going off map here. Drum machine designer. Okay, so let's record in that kick. All right, so here's that kick over here. We'll just quantize that. All right, so if we solo at that kick, and then let's go ahead and apply the fat effects. And we're turning bass enhancer. This is where it actually shines. You hear that sub bass that's underneath that kick. And this could really help you out thicken up your 808s or your kick, or just add in an 808 subtone underneath your kick and not even have to do anything else other than use what's in here. You could change the different types. So if you just want like a solid sine wave underneath, classic. And of course you could tune where you want it. So if you want a, like a subby one, you, you're gonna wanna put this down to like 70. If you want it to be higher, kind of mimic the sound of the kick. So if you want that like wobbly sort of EDM style kick, you'll turn it to warm. And you'll get something like that, but I'll probably do another tutorial on just this little guy right here and how you can add it to different styles of kick. Uh, for compressor, It does exactly what it says. It's you add in more compression and you can adjust the release time and you can change the type. Uh, next, you got your envelope uh, envelope follower right here and your LFO, your LFO one, two and your master track. You can, you have a limiter as well on it. You could turn off the limiter if you wanted to. Again, it's just a bunch of effects crammed into one plugin. And then once these are all enabled, or any one of them are enabled, you can also change the chain in which they play through. So if I wanted my mod effects to play after the compressor, I can do that. Or if I wanted my compressor to be first, and then my bass enhancer, and then the mod effects over here, that's good, or I can move it around to here, and you can play around with the chain because that will manipulate and change the way it sounds. So that is fat effects in a nutshell. Uh, next we're gonna get into, uh, Let's see over here, step effects. So step effects is pretty much the same as your fat effects. You have the same different uh, sections and modulators that you can do in this plugin, except this is a step sequencer where you can kind of do some unique things. I'm probably not gonna be using this too much. Um, it's a little too, too much to set up while you're making beats, but I'll show you how to use it. Let's change fat effects over here to step effects. So once again, here's your mod effects. You sort of could like add chorus to kind of thicken up that sound a little bit. You got your X, Y, which you can kind of program in with any of these settings, just like um, the fat effects. You got your delay straightforward it's your delay okay then you got your filter your straight up filter you got your distortion straight up distortion you got a reverb on this one and of course you got your master over here now, the cool thing here is that you can actually step input when you want these effects to happen. So let's say I only want, um, let's turn this on over here, and we are going to, okay, let's leave it at the filter for now, filter cutoff. Let's say we only want the last four beats in this measure to kind of have that filter effect, so it's gonna sound like this. So 
you can kind of adjust that right there. All right, so let's say we want to add reverb as it builds up into the sound. We can do that as well. So let's change this to our reverb mix. So we can actually build that up. So if we go like this. But we can build that up like this. And if you don't want it choppy, you could kind of link them all by doing this. So it doesn't become choppy. Then you kind of get the idea of how you can create interesting, even new sounds from the sound that you already have just by changing up some of your step sequencing right over here. And then you can apply different things here. So you can also set this to anything that you want. So let's go to uh, delay mix. Sure, why not? hear how it has that little stutter at the end. Now I probably didn't show the best examples of how to use it, but you get the idea of how you could program stuff in. And as I said before, it does take a lot of time to kind of program stuff in. And that's why I said I'm probably or most likely will not use it. The good thing is they do have some presets. So if you want to kind of do like a fall or rise, let's do a rolling one. That's on the reverb mix. You know, you get the idea. That is the step effects. Am I going to use it? Probably not. Uh, maybe if I feel creative, I will reach to it. But for me, it's a little bit too much work to kind of go in here and uh, step sequence effects in. And I'm just being honest. While you're in sort of the mood, maybe this is sort of a thing when you're mixing after the so fact. The last thing we're going to show you here is the new reverbs or reverb, uh, you can find it under reverb, chroma verb. And um, here it is right here. Like I said, this already has a lot of reverb on it, so it wasn't the greatest piece to use, but uh, it will make do. So right here, you can adjust the EQ on the actual reverb. Along the bottom, you can adjust the attack, the size of it, the density, uh, the decay value, when the reverb kind of rings out or how long it does, the distance, uh, your dry wet value. Classic dry wet values under the details tab. You can kind of uh, fine tune the EQ right over here. So for the output of this reverb. And you got a couple different modulators as well down here. But for the most part, what you're gonna be using is the different presets that are here. So you got room, chamber, concert hall, theater, synth hall. So if I do this 100% wet, or a lot wet, <laughs> you're gonna see how it sounds. So it's actually a really nice sounding reverb. It's nice and full. It's not thin sounding like some reverbs, other reverbs that Logic has. And uh, it looks actually really cool in my opinion. And this graphic EQ sort of color 
sort of spectrum thing happening here is really cool. Like it just looks cool on its own. There's not much really show more about chroma verb. It's how you are gonna use it and the different sounds or reverb types that you can kind of put on it and how it sounds. So that's probably something that you'd wanna load in 10.4 and play around with yourself. But that is pretty much 10.4 in a nutshell. Uh, how what I've been using for the past week and um, what I would be using in the future. Again, just to sum it up, chroma verb I'll be using for sure. Uh, session horn, session studios, probably not. Uh, the step sequencer effects, multi, what was it called again? Step effects, probably not going to be using it. Fat effects, I will be using because uh, I like how it joins everything into one, especially this bass enhancer, enhancer here that you can uh, kind of add in a nice undertone to your kick and then add in some distortion right within one plugin uh, and add some compression as well. So this is actually a good plugin to be using on various sorts of stuff. Again, the step effects, not too crazy about it. The EQs, I will be using. It does add some nice character when you pull for an Eve or do a pull tag. And again, it just simplifies things when you're mixing. A lot of times, especially in today's day and age, we have so much plugins that we can use to kind of mix and manipulate sounds. It could get overwhelming, but sometimes those simple plugins with just one or two knobs, it really, really sort of pushes your mix along a lot better, keeps things simple. So if you do have a question on this, on Logic Pro 10.4, you can ask me in the comments below. If you just wanna talk about it, hit me up in the comments below and we'll have a chat over there. But for more good videos like this one, remember to hit that subscribe button and I'll talk to y'all soon. Later. Peace.